Today we're going to be installing Windows 10 onto a MacBook Pro using Boot Camp. This is going to be using an official Windows 10 ISO image from Microsoft along with the official Boot Camp software on Mac OS. What's up guys, my name is George, I'm a freelance video marketer based in the north of England. On this channel I share content all around tech, filmmaking and freelancing, so if that is your vibe then hit subscribe and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be completing the boot camp process. This is quite a long process and some people can get a little bit lost in it, but don't worry, it's pretty simple. It can just be a bit time consuming. And as in the UK at the moment, it's winter, the sun's going to set in about an hour. I'm hoping this is done in the next hour. So we are racing against the sun, people. Racing against the sun. For this process, you are going to need a few things. You'll need one of these Mac devices, be it a MacBook, MacBook Pro, MacBook Air, Mac Mini, iMac, or Mac Pro. I will drop a link to the Apple requirements for all the different hardware that is actually compatible with Boot Camp and with up-to-date versions of Windows 10. You will also need to make sure that you have updated your Mac device to the latest version of Mac OS. The current version of Mac OS for me right now is Mac OS Catalina 10.15.7. So you wanna make sure you go into about this Mac and update to whatever the latest version of Mac OS is before you complete this process. On your Mac computer, you will need at least 64 gigabytes of free space in which we can install Windows 10 and also install any relevant applications once we're using it as a Windows machine. The minimum requirement is 48 gigabytes, but I would recommend anywhere from 64 to 128 to 256. To install Windows 10 with Boot Camp, you will need a blank USB flash drive with at least eight gigabytes of space. But I would always say, you know, if you can go a bit bigger, do that just in case that the Windows 10 ISO has increased in size by the time you are trying this process. That leads me on to the last thing that you're going to need and what we're gonna jump into doing right now, which is you will need a download of Windows 10 from Microsoft.com. Okay, so on your Mac device, you wanna go into your browser. I currently use Microsoft Edge. And at the top, we want to search Windows 10 ISO. You then go to Microsoft.com. And then we're going to go through the download process. It's very simple. You just want to pick Windows 10. Product language, select your product language that you want to have your Windows 10 installed as because it'll just make your life a lot easier. I'm assuming you don't want to be translating every time you do something. And then we need a 64-bit download. And this will then take anywhere from 10 minutes to half an hour to download. Mine's currently saying about 15 minutes, but I have one downloaded already. Pause the video, take some time to download that ISO before you move on. In my downloads, I have a copy of the Windows 10 latest ISO here and the full size is 6.22 gigabytes. So that shows that you definitely do need at least eight gigabytes on this drive. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pop this USB into the Mac device. And we're gonna open this up. And we can see here that I already have a disk image created on this drive. I'm just gonna go up to disk utility and I'm going to format this. I'm just gonna name this Mamac, because it's Mamac. So that is now done. And the next thing you wanna do is you want to go up to our spotlight search and search bootcamp assistant. This will then come up. This is quite a straightforward process, but it can have some hiccups and a lot of the hiccups kind of come further down the line. At the beginning, essentially it's just sort of like installing any piece of software. Like it's got quite a helpful window up to their design everything makes sense, it's all explained quite well. Each of these options is actually helpful for the bootcamp process, unless you just wanna go straight for install Windows 10 or later version, you can just select all three. You can see under option two that you have download the Windows support software from Apple. This support software will be designed specifically for each Mac, and this allows us to use Apple keyboards, mouse, trackpad, and built-in camera so that you can actually use it as a full piece of software. On my previous version of this video, I think I hadn't made this part clear, which might be part of the reason why some people have gotten into using uh, Windows 10 via bootcamp and their keyboard wasn't really working properly and the trackpad wasn't working with all of its features. So you wanna make sure that all of these are, are ticked. Under here we have ISO image. You wanna make sure you click choose 
go to where you have your ISO image located. So I have mine here just in my downloads. So I wanna click on that, hit open. And then we can see here that we have our destination disk, which we can see here is my SanDisk 32 gig thumb drive. Hit continue. This will erase our drive. We've already formatted this in Disk Utility, so we do not care about this being formatted again. This is now just gonna copy over our Windows files for us. Okay, we're back. So that actually for me took about 20 minutes which is quite a long time. So I hope you had a coffee and a snack, etc., etc. And we are now past that stage. If you did not tick all the options there, it might've taken a few minutes shorter, but if you ticked all the options as I did, then it should have taken between 15, 20 minutes. So now we have the option of creating our Windows partition. And here we can see that the minimum space required, as I mentioned before, is 48 gigabytes. So if you did wanna maximize the full usage of your hard drive for your Mac, then keeping at 48 gigabytes is probably a smart option, especially if you have something like a 128 gigabyte MacBook Air or MacBook Pro 13 inch or something like that. Uh, but in my case, I'm actually gonna bring Windows up to about 128 gig as that is a small MacBook. And I always think my first MacBook was 128 gigs in total. So if Windows is set to something like that, then I'm cool with it. Fine, I'm going for 130 gig. Apparently I can't get it like too specific. Okay, so that's it. We've got it set, 130 gig for Windows. We can move on and hit install. Now it's asking for our admin password. So pop that in or get the person who is the admin to come pop it in for you. At the bottom, we then have a little notice saying partitioning disk. The system may be unresponsive. Please do not power off the computer or restart until the operation is complete. That is important to remember. Sometimes it can be a bit flashy and it might look like it's about to die, but don't worry, hold on tight it'll be done. It is getting, it's getting dark here now. I'm, bit, I'm gonna have to transition into dark room mode somehow. Mid shoot, it's been tricky. Just while this is loading, you can feel free to skip ahead. It's been weird in winter shooting. I like to shoot some stuff during the day, but it's tricky cause like the light goes quite quick and I don't know, winter's just a bit trickier to shoot in. I don't mind when I'm shooting in the dark, but I don't want to shoot in the dark during the day. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay, so as you can see, it's getting quite dark. So I'm gonna put lights on and stuff. And we've just got up to after about 40, 40 minutes of waiting for that to copy over and partition the disk, we've been asked to put in the password. So that may have taken a similar amount of time for you. This is the longest that's taken for me ever. So cool. And now the Mac is going to flash a few times and shut down. Um, so hopefully, that screen record just survived. If it didn't, it was just a simple text box popping up to ask for your password. And the Mac is now rebooting. So I'm just gonna quickly swap around the setup. Forgive me, it will just be the camera recording the laptop screen for this period of the video, uh, but it is just what we're gonna have to do because I won't be able to use a screen recorder during the Windows installation process. So bear with. Okay, so we can see just at the top of the screen we've got a little flashing symbol this means that windows is starting up for us just bear with me while i turn on some ambient lighting for the new scene so that's good we now have windows 10 appearing for us we're starting to get somewhere a little bit closer this part of the process will take a very long time that last partitioning process usually only takes about 15 to 20 minutes uh, but this time it took us, I mean, yeah, about 45, 50 minutes in the end. It took quite some time. And this next part of the process in terms of actually installing Windows 10 via a usual Windows install method as though we're on a blank PC will take somewhere in the region of 30 minutes to an hour. Okay, so this has now been a bit frozen for a few minutes, which normally it takes a couple of seconds, but it actually has frozen. So I'm actually going to do a forced reboot. The PC is very, very hot. Mm. I should leave it for a little bit longer. Usually by this point, we would actually be part way into the Windows install. So I am a little bit concerned. This isn't going to proceed and it actually might have just sort of crashed. 
So I'm going to do a force reboot and then try boot back into Windows manually by holding down the Alt key when we reboot. So we can hold down the power button. That is powered off. Oh, no, that's not what I wanted either. Okay, cool. So that worked. So I've got Microsoft HD, Windows, EFI boot. I'm gonna go for Windows. So hopefully this will get us back to where we were. Yes, we've got the XFAT flashing up. Okay, yeah, we had the Windows pop up again, then we're back to the underscore. What we're hoping for here is the Windows logo again and then with our actual booting up circle. Okay, and we have got our Windows logo again, and yes, we've got our circle that is hopefully gonna be getting us into a start. If you have the same thing that I just had where the Windows logo was not moving and you weren't getting anywhere, make sure you do what I just did and go back through, force reboot, boot up again, hold down alt, and then you'll boot into the version of Windows. Okay, cool, so now we are at our Windows setup. This is gonna be pretty standard for what you'd expect for booting up into a Windows computer. Uh, whether you've done that much in the past or not, it will be pretty much what you'd expect. Okay, cool, so we're just gonna zip through this as quickly as we can. Um, activation key, I do not have a product key, so I'm gonna select, I don't have a product key, or just hit next. You do not need a product key to activate Windows. You could actually run this forever without a product key. Uh, a product key for Windows only gets you customization options, so actually you don't need it to run the Windows machine. You will just be limited to a stock desktop background, etc. We're just gonna go for, actually we're gonna go for Windows 10 Pro, as that's what I run on my main Windows machine. I accept license terms. We have our partition that is set to bootcamp. Hit next. For anyone that's been waiting a long time during this process, I've actually just been um, reading some of my Kindle while this is going on. It's been kind of a weirdly nice time mid video to do some reading. Each of these steps here are nice and easy to track because we actually get percentage increases as they're going. So we know everything is gonna go along much quicker. Okay, so now Windows is gonna restart in order to continue. boot up into Mac again. Don't boot into Mac. Give me Windows. Yes, okay, we've got the flashing underscore, Windows 10. We still have a bit more of an installation process to go. That essentially just means that all of the components are now booted into our partition that we set up. Uh, so now it will be a case of actually setting up our Windows user account. Yes, starting services, getting devices ready, etc., etc. Okay. Uh, it's done a little mini restart again. Now that all of our services are supposedly ready. Okay. And we've got our boot up again. Just a moment. I'm not gonna lie, I think one hour 21 is longer than a moment. Okay, right, here we go. Okay, we are past all of our boring yes and no questions. A lot of it is sort of just saying no to Microsoft using your data. Um, and this might take several minutes. I just wonder, like when they say several minutes, do they mean over an hour? You know, we're about an hour 24 so thanks for sticking with us on this one i hope you're nearly there i hope you've been getting through all the same points if you've got any problems that i haven't hit drop them in the comments okay we are now into a version of windows 10 so it might look a little bit weird 
this is interesting. Compared to the last time I did this, Microsoft Edge is now actually the uh, updated browser web of Microsoft Edge, maybe later, um, is the Chromium version, which is very interesting. If you want to go see some videos on Microsoft Edge, you can go check out this playlist up here. Might be of interest to you. Um, so we've got the bootcamp installer. This is essentially the Windows counterpart to what we were using on Mac. And as you can tell, it looks exactly as you'd expect. I do wish Microsoft would improve the overall UI of stock Windows applications. Like, what, what DPI is that? What is it? It looks like a dodgy restaurant menu. Okay, so now Bootcamp has just optimized our Windows interface. Now this is much more to a normal scale that we'd expect. So we've got our start bar. We've got our task bar at the bottom. Start menu everywhere is absolutely fine. Everything's looking good. Mouse motion is normal. Trackpad is good. Okay, so now we're at bootcamp install completed. Hit finish. You must restart your system. Yeah, cool. Restart for us one more time. We are now at a proper Windows login screen. So we've now got, oh mate, when did I hit the hash key? Great, my name is George hashtag. <laughs> okay, cool, so login normally. Cool, we're in. Windows is set. Okay, so here we have it. Here is our Windows 10 ready MacBook Pro with Bootcamp installed. This is with all of the hardware running, absolutely fine. But now, if you wanna get back into Mac OS, what you'll need to do is shut down, as you typically would with a Windows device. You could just hold the power button, but you just wanna go on power, shut down, completely turn off the device. And then in order to get back into Mac OS, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold down the Alt key to then hop back in and pick. You might be thinking right now, do you still need to keep the USB in? You can now pull the USB out. You can format this, use it for whatever you need to in the future. Doesn't really matter now. So now we're gonna hit power again. Hold Alt. I always tend to sort of like give it a tap just after it's into booting up mode. Here we go, we now have our Windows and Mac options. So if I want to go back into Macintosh HD, I can just hit that and now we're booting back into Mac. And then the same thing applies if you want to boot back into Windows. When you shut down from Mac OS, hold down the Alt key again and then select the Windows option. That is it for me today, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. If you have, be sure to like this video, drop a comment down below if you have any questions regarding Bootcamp, any problems you're having with software or hardware, and I'll try to answer those for you. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And until next time, I'm out.